Hello and welcome to this lesson on IV curves, current voltage curves, which are sometimes called characteristic curves or even just characteristics. The lesson is divided into two parts and this is the first part and in this part we're going to take a look at what a characteristic curve is and we'll do that by looking at the characteristic curve of a filament bulb and of a resistor. Now here's a very simple circuit, filament bulb, cell. A filament bulb is one of the ones with a thin wire in the centre that gets hot. If we want to know the voltage across the resistor and the current, th sorry, the voltage across the bulb and the current through the bulb, we use a voltmeter and ammeter. The voltmeter gets connected in parallel with the bulb and the ammeter gets connected in series. And typical values might be 1.5 volts, 1.5 volts across the bulb, 0.1 amps through the bulb. The way I've drawn this shows the positive terminal of the cell on the left. That means the conventional current will go clockwise around the circuit, positive to negative. In fact, for a a uh, bulb, a filament bulb, it doesn't matter which way round the positive and negative are. But for some components, and in part two we'll talk about the diode, for some components it does matter which way round the positive and negative are. And we need some way to indicate this. So if I flip the positive and negative, we say reverse the polarity, let me do that. Now the positive is on the right, negative on the left, the conventional current will go anticlockwise. I'm going to show that on the results by having negative values. I'll say the voltage is minus 1.5 volts and the current is minus 0.1 amps. The minus signs merely mean we've reversed the polarity, we've turned the plus and minus of the cell round. Now, to measure a characteristic curve, I need to measure the different currents we get through the bulb when different voltages are applied to the bulb. And the easiest way to do that is instead of a cell or battery, we're going to use a variable power supply unit, PSU, power supply unit. And these are common in school laboratories. It'll provide a low voltage which is adjustable. The symbol shows two little circles which represent the terminals you connect your wires to. The arrow shows the device is adjustable. Usually we have a dial on the power supply that we can turn to alter the voltage. So using this circuit I could measure the voltage across the bulb and the current through it, adjust the power supply and measure a new voltage, a new current. Adjust the power supply and measure a different voltage and different current. So I can change the voltage across the bulb and for each voltage I can measure what the current is. And I can build up a table of results. This would be fairly typical. Notice how I've done the headings by the way which follow the SI System International format quantity divide sign a slash unit quantity slash unit. And here's the table, for example, when the voltage was 1.00 volts, the current was 1.19 amps. And I can turn the table into a graph. I can plot current on the y-axis, voltage on the x-axis. And if I do that, I'll get a smooth curve. These points align a smooth curve. By the way, if you're doing this, for yourself at some point and you get points don't join them up with straight lines you draw a smooth curve through the points this graph is a characteristic curve it's an IV graph an IV curve it is the characteristic of the filament bulb this is what we mean by characteristic curve simply a graph showing how the current on the y-axis depends on the voltage on the x-axis. And they're very useful. If, for example, I wanted to know 
what voltage is required to produce a current of 1 amp through the bulb. I would simply find 1 amp on the current scale, go across, down, and I could read the voltage needed to cause 1 amp to flow through the bulb. I could reverse the polarity. I could swap the plus and minus sign, basically swap the wires, reverse the connections. If I did this, I could take another set of results. They'd be the same, basically, except for the minus signs in the front, which indicate we've reversed the polarity. If I wanted to show that on a graph, my axes would have to start at the origin zero, and for voltage, goes to the left. For current, goes downwards. And if I plot these results, I get a curve that looks like this with the negative values of voltage and current. I could join the two graphs together. I've got one with the positive results, one with the negative results, and they can be combined like this. And this gives us the full characteristic of the filament bulb. It shows us what the current will be for any value of voltage in the range. doesn't matter what the polarity is, we can read it off. That's the full IV curve, or full characteristic curve, of a filament bulb. The reason it's curved, we'll talk about later. What about a different component? Well, resistors are very common in electronic circuits. For example, if you look inside a television, you'll see many resistors. They vary in shape and size, but here's a picture of a typical one, maybe a few millimeters long. The symbol for a resistor is a simple rectangle. And if I want to measure the characteristic of a resistor, it's IV curve, use the same circuit, but instead of a filament bulb, I put the resistor here. If I did this, I get the results. And for a typical resistor, I get a set of results, and the graph turns out to be a straight line through the origin. That means the current is proportional to the voltage. It obeys Ohm's law. Now, if you don't know about Ohm's law yet, don't worry about it, but make a mental note that the straight line through the origin, current versus voltage graph, means it obeys Ohm's law. And things which obey Ohm's law are called ohmic conductors. A simple piece of wire, providing the temperature doesn't vary, will obey Ohm's law, give us a straight line characteristic. A resistor used in an electronic circuit usually will give us a straight line through the origin. So the characteristic is a simple straight line through the origin. I could verse the polarity and do the results again. Same results, negative values. The graph would look like this. And I could combine my positive and negative results. And this is the full characteristic of a resistor. I can read off what the current will be for any voltage. We mentioned that the filament bulb had a curved characteristic, and let's just talk about why. And I've given you a bullet point list of an, an explanation in bullet point form here. Let me just walk you through it. By the way, that thing after the question mark is a typo. So just ignore that. Why is the filament bulb's IV curve not straight? Well, what happens as we increase current and voltage through the bulb is the bulb heats up. That means the atoms in the filament are vibrating with a bigger amplitude. The atoms vibrate as the filament gets hotter. They vibrate more. Conduction electrons are trying to pass through the filament. But if there are more vibrations, there'll be more collisions between the conduction electrons and the atoms. That means there's more resistance to the flow of current because of the extra collisions. So the current is going to be smaller than if the temperature was kept low. And that's why this curve deviates here. It's due to the effect of heating causing resistance to increase. OK, in part two, we're going to take a look at the diode and also some practical aspects of measuring an IV curve. Hope to see you there. Thanks.